Welcome back. Um, didn't expect this one. So, uh, yeah, Ducks and Oilers. Uh, we're going to review this, and then the evening games get started. So it was Dostal versus Skinner. Um, you know, Dostal might be ready. Coming out of this, this these last two games, I, I do wonder if Pat Verbeek watching this is going to think, okay, if we decide to do something crazy and maybe put Gibson on the block and see what's out there, like, right? So kids broadcast today, so the next-gen thing they're doing in Edmonton. I, it, is, it is something I get a kick out of when teams do that. Uh, so, uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins fires one wide. The Oilers press at two minutes. 5.07 in. Uh, Nurse deflects one in off Comtois. Uh, the assist going to Ryan. So, the shots are 4-1 to one for the Oilers at six minutes. And at this point in the game, I'm saying, well, the Oilers are already up one nothing. Uh, the, the Ducks don't look very good so far. So, yeah, the Oilers are probably going to win this one by a lot. There's not going to be a lot for me to talk about after this game. Uh, Terry has a rush chance that saved. Kulikov has a near miss wide. Nurse fires one wide as the Oilers press again. Uh, the, do the Ducks then press at nine minutes. They weren't getting nearly as many shots as the Oilers, although in the first it was closer than it was in the rest of the game. Uh, Henrique has a shot this block. The Oilers rush. There's a press by the Oilers with nine and a half minutes left, but they're kept to the outside by Anaheim. Uh, Hyman was denied. Kulikov fires one wide. The Ducks couldn't clear it, but eventually Vetrano does get that puck out. Ducks get a power play. McTavish has a blast that's held. That's killed off. But about 20 seconds after it's done, the Oilers are in the midst of a change. And they don't really get themselves situated. And the Ducks tie it. It's Carrick from McTavish and Magna at 14.37. Buries that one from the side of the net. And it's a tie game. Ducks then look for the lead with 2.54 left. The Ducks go back to the power play. They score on this one. It's Fowler from McTavish and Henrique at 17.19. Did not take long for them to get that one. Really nice pass by McTavish, and Fowler buries it. Then there's a post for McDavid as the Oilers press. They're looking to tie. 1, 47, 1 minute, 47 seconds left. The Oilers get a power play. They had a lot of those today. Um, that's where, you know, the goal scoring was coming from. So, McDavid fires one high, uh, or fires one wide. Ryan Nugent Hopkins has a blast that's held. And for two games in a row, the Ducks lead after one. And that's noteworthy because that just doesn't happen. Uh, in fact, this is a game in which they didn't trail. And that's something that we hadn't seen until a couple weeks ago either. The Ducks have definitely been playing better. So second period, Ducks finish the kill. There's two shots allowed on that. Both of those were in the first period, not in the second. Uh, Oilers have the early edge. Holloway's denied on a net drive. Things get punchy after a hold by Skinner. We get two minutes of four on four after that. Uh, then things get punchy after a hold by Dostal, which leads to two more guys going to the box before the other two have even come out. So some dislike, some chippiness showing up in this one. It didn't stay that way. More penalties are called. Vetrano's denied as the Ducks press. The Oilers rush. The shots are 6-2 to two for the Oilers at 7 minutes. But then on a turnover, uh, Strom scores at 8.31 on a breakaway. Beautiful breakaway for former Oiler Ryan Strom. Uh, Bouchard has a blast that's held. The Oilers press with 9 minutes left. Uh, McDavid can't bury one. Dostal, absolutely excellent. And really emerging as the story in this one already at this point. Oilers shuffling lines, looking for that spark. The interesting thing is I didn't think they were playing poorly. They just weren't getting the goals because Dostal was saying, forget it. Uh, Ducks press with six and a half minutes left. Uh, an offensive zone penalty for Klingberg. The Oilers get the power play. Not the only offensive zone penalty for the Ducks today either. Uh, McDavid fires one wide. The Ducks clear. That's killed off. Great kill by the Ducks, but with 124 left, the Oilers go back to the power play and they score on it. It's Nugent Hopkins from McDavid and Dreisaitl at 1932. He buries that one in close. It is the fourth time all year the Ducks lead after two periods. So we are truly in crazy town at this point going into the third period. Um, I'm not talking about the one that had that one hit wonder thing in the early 2000s. Uh, Oilers attack early, draw power play, dry settle as a one-timer that's held, and then there's 46 seconds of five on three because the Ducks are being overwhelmed, so they take a penalty just out of sheer trying to make something happen. Well, five on three, you can't do that to the Oilers. Uh, the Oilers score on it. It's McDavid from dry settle and Barry at 206. No chance on that one for Dostal. None. Zero, zilch, just not a chance. Uh, Hyman jams one in, but it's waved off. Uh, Deutschland played at this point, so of course when Ramstein's played in a building and I hear it, I have to throw it on the board. That's just the kind of fan I am. Uh, Hyman did push Dostal's pad, so Jay Woodcroft decides not to challenge. Good. Uh, I think if that had been challenged, it would have been no goal for goalie interference. 
The shots are 7 nothing for Edmonton at five and a half minutes. They have all of the momentum in the world. Strom, though, has a turnover chance that gets saved. And then Klingberg wires one far corner. The puck had gone around the boards for, on a Vetrano chance. Uh, Dostal with the secondary assist at 6.08. So, yeah. Um, or not Dostal. Nope. That's Strom. I wrote Dostal because I had it on the brain so much just from watching this game that, you know, I, I was saying out loud while I was watching the game how well he was playing and all that fun stuff. Yeah, I'm left-handed. Don't make a big thing of it. It gets weird. But yeah, Strom with the secondary assist. Because like, no, no, no. If there was Strom that had the turnover chance, how would Dostal? Unless he went to the other end of the ice, we'd have something else to talk about if he did. Uh, so yeah, uh, Bouchard kind of screened Skinner on that one. Um, I've seen a lot of the criticism of Darnell Nurse and his play in this game. I think that the defense in general for, for Edmonton just had meltdowns at the absolute worst possible time. Uh, Hyman nearly answers. The shots are 13-2 for the Oilers at eight and a half minutes. Spoiler alert. The Ducks wouldn't get another shot. So after the game, I don't think the, the Zamboni needs to worry about that end of the ice at all. Uh, Hyman's tonight again. The Ducks were allowing way too many prime chances. Basically, it, it looked like after they got that goal, they went, all right, well, it's it's up to you, kid. And Dossel's like, pardon? And it's up to him. So Ducks are a post away from five on th or five to three on a blast from Leeson that hits that post. Um, Bouchard's shot is held. Nurse has a shot. that saved. It's all Oilers. Uh, things get pushy after a hold by Dostal because the Oilers are getting frustrated at this point. Shift after shift after shift, the Oilers are pressuring. It is, I, I cannot stress enough how much pressure the Oilers were putting on and somehow this game ends up going the Ducks' way. 3.43 left, Zegras takes a penalty in the offensive zone. One of the few times they get the puck in Edmonton's zone and their star forward, Trevor Zegras, takes the penalty. All with all, um, or Trevor Zegras, with all apologies to Troy Terry, Trevor Zegras is the star on that team, even though Terry might be the better player. Which is a whole debate we can have another time. Sometimes that superstar that draws all the interest and has exciting plays may not necessarily be the best player. Uh, McDavid's denied in close, and then it turned out it was the post that denied him. They showed that on the replay, still. And there was a whistle there, even though the puck might have been loose. Uh, 149 left. The Oilers call a timeout. They would pull the goaltender with 140 left. I was fine with them waiting until they got control of the puck in the offensive zone. I think that's important. Sometimes I think coaches pull the goalie a little bit too soon or in the wrong situation. But anyways, the, the Ducks hold on. So is it Dostal or Dostil today? So... I apologize. I came up with that. It's been a lot of hockey today, and I've got 10 more games to watch, so I, I do apologize, but all I could see was, that's kind of close to steal. Hey, do steal. <laughs> there you go. Or does steal, but do steal the game. He did. Uh, it's been 67 games since back-to-back -back wins for the Ducks, so if you've had a bottle of champagne for this occasion, why? And you can open it. So the Ducks are 9-20-3 with the win. It feels like they're they're getting some of their... Well, I mean, Dostal steals this one. Um, the Oilers 17-14-1. This has to be a very frustrating result for them. They should have won this. Look at the shots. 11-8 Edmonton in the first. 15-7 Edmonton in the second. 22-2 Edmonton in the third. Final shots are 49-17 for Edmonton. And before anybody comes in with, well, they were all from a distance. No, they weren't. Uh, power plays. Anaheim 1 for 2 Edmonton 2 for 6. The hits 24 to 18 for Edmonton. Dostal, 46 saves on 49 shots. Skinner, 13 saves on 17 shots. Much like I said about Huso earlier, I wouldn't put this one on the goalie, though. Uh, that being said, were they goalied? Yeah. And what a fantastic game that was. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. And an upset is usually a surprise. And it usually generates some discussion. So let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.